Now I'll be the first to tell you, my moving out story was not the norm at all. When, when I was 17 years old, I could not wait. When I say that, I mean that. I could not wait to move out of my parents' house. I just felt like I was restricted and I've never been one to really like the fact of, of having to live by or abide by someone else's rules. I like to be the one making the rules. I like the one being the boss. And at that point, I was not. I just felt like I had so many limitations and I, I just, I wasn't for all of that. I just wasn't. I just felt like I was already grown. So why am I still living with mom and dad? So pretty much all of my bottled up emotions from my freshman year in high school all the way up until the point I was a senior in high school at 17, I already had my mind made up that I'm getting up out of here by the time graduation comes. And I had a plan to do so. And guess what? I did just that. I moved out right at 17 years old. But I want to make one thing clear though. Absolutely nothing could prepare me for that. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. I talk about saving money, getting out of debt, increasing your income, and taking full control of your life. If you like stuff like that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and like this video. Let's get into it. Now, the way that I moved out started off looking exactly what it looks like when most guys move out. It's when they go off to college in a different city. Now to me, I was the man, I, I was moving out and I was moving out onto the real world on my own. I was wrong. Now the thing here is my story is still not the norm. You know, most guys return back home after graduation for a little bit, even if it's just for a couple of months, sometimes even a couple of years. Me, that did not happen. I mean, I did not come back. I had to adapt to a whole new world that I just wasn't used to operating in. Not once, but twice. So moving out the first time, that was me physically moving away from my parents' house. The second time I moved out was me moving away from the mindset of, oh, I'm in college now, so I'm in the real world, because I quickly understood, no, this is not the real world at all. And being in the mindset that, wait, college isn't the real world at all, that is where the transformation happened for me. That is exactly why I never came back after moving out physically that first time. I never went back. I just made a promise to myself that once I move out of my parents' place, I'm never going back. Like, we're not talking about visiting, we're not talking about holidays. I'm purely talking about living with them. And throughout this entire process between my ages of 17 all the way up to 21, I had to make decisions that I never thought I'd have to make. And I had to learn a lot of things that I never thought I would have to learn. I had to learn how to save money with low income. I had to learn how to budget my money. I had to learn about debt. I had to learn how to grow thicker skin. I had to learn how to think for myself. Bro, there's so many financial lessons and life lessons that I got from moving out on my own for the first time. And I just want to share it with you, especially if you're considering moving out. So the first big lesson that I had to learn the hard way is you are accountable for any and everything that you do, even things that you choose not to do. And I say I learned this the hard way because I had several experiences between the ages of 17 and 18 where I got slapped in the face by these experiences over and over and over again until it finally registered in my head. You see, getting out on your own for the first time and really anything in your adult life is all about priorities. And at that time, my priorities were all messed up. So I basically prioritized fun over schooling for a solid year. Yeah, I, I, I'm just being honest, man. I'm, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm going straight up admit it. I prioritized fun over schooling. And that was partially because I just wasn't used to the freedom that I got. Cause like I said earlier in this video, I felt restricted and like I had a lot of limitations. And so going into a whole new world where you're just not used to operating in. And now all of a sudden, you have all this freedom and now you know mom can't tell you you can't go to that party you know what i'm saying now dad can't tell you when your curfew is and, you know that was something that i struggled with for my first year just on my own as a young man that was just one of the biggest struggles that i had you wouldn't think it would be a problem but 
when you're actually in it and you don't really have priorities or plans or really any set goals, it's very hard to operate in a, in a situation or, or a area where you have all of this freedom, all of this free time. It, it, it becomes a point where everything is optional. Succeeding is optional. Failing is optional. You know what I mean? And when you get that initial dose of that freedom, it can be intoxicating to the point of you doing things that contradict exactly what you wanna do. Bro, I went to school to be an engineer, but my first year in college, my actions did not reflect an aspiring engineer until I fell on my face a few times. You know, stuff like hanging out with friends, going to parties and hanging out with girls, those were things that were on my mind at that time. That was all that mattered. I mean, that stuff was more important than food. It was more important than water. It was more important than studying. And because I was a naturally smart student in school, I just justified my behavior by saying, well, I mean, it's, it's easy anyways. I'm gonna pass the test anyways. It's all good. But you know, all those actions of going to those parties and hanging out with all my friends and stuff, all of those actions led to inactions. I wasn't studying like I was supposed to. I wasn't keeping track of deadlines like I was supposed to. I wasn't grinding like I was supposed to. And because of all of that, my grades got hit so hard. Bro, when I tell you my grades got hit hard, they got hit hard. I'm talking like the second semester of my freshman year in college, I went from a 3.6 all the way to a 2.7 GPA. It took one semester for that to happen. And you best believe I had to work super hard the rest of my college career just to get my GPA back up to where it was. But you know what? That woke me up. I was like, oh, whew, that is not gonna happen anymore. I promise you that. I promise myself that's not gonna happen anymore. And it didn't. And the beauty in that situation is, you know, now my priorities are straight. What I do directly aligns with the goals that I have for myself. I could have blamed my friends for influencing me to hang out with them, go out to parties with them, play video games with them. I could have blamed my professors for not properly teaching the material and forcing me to do all the work myself. But instead, I just looked at me. I looked at myself and I held myself accountable for the fact that I didn't do what I was supposed to be doing. And when you do that, it'll change your entire outlook and you won't have a victim's mentality. And you know, that directly translated over into the next big life lesson that I learned and, and that's, you have to have a plan for your life at all times. There cannot be a time where you don't have a plan or a strategy or something that you're trying to go towards for the betterment of your future. For me, that meant there was no being stagnant, there was no lack of clarity, there was no indecisiveness when it came to what my next move was. Ever since I fell flat on my face because of my grades drastically dropping just because of me not doing what I was supposed to do, that opened my mind up to endless possibilities and, and I came to the realization that I have to go into any and everything with a plan and a strategy. And if you go out there like I did, thinking that you have it all figured out, that it's gonna be easy, you will be humbled every single time. So I started thinking, huh, most guys end up living back at the house after they graduate. Most guys don't have a job lined up after college. Most guys don't even know what they could expect as a starting salary once they graduate from college. So I heavily, heavily did research. I looked into all of those things because the thought of me graduating and having to move back in with my parents just because of my lack of initiative literally made me sick to my stomach. Just the thought. And I was so driven about this because it made me think about my goals more and more and more to the point where I was obsessed with them. And a big goal, really the biggest goal that I had for myself at that time was I don't ever, ever wanna to have to rely on any of my family members or my parents for money. If anything, they would be relying on me for money. That was my mindset and I was going to achieve that goal. And you know what? That's where the strategies came. That's where the discipline came from. That's when I realized that 
I have to become financially independent. But before I become financially independent, I have to become mentally independent and think for myself. So with all that, I had to be disciplined with how I spent my money, where I put my money, and just how I thought about money as a whole. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't just go out and buy anything I wanted just because. I didn't care how nice those new Nike shoes were. I didn't care how fun that new video game looked. I didn't care how many times my friends invited me to go out with them. I didn't care. I resisted the urge to spend my money on those things because I had a savings goal and I was going to reach it no matter what. That means I had to be smart with the low income I had and actually save it. That means I had to think so far ahead to the point where I knew exactly how much money I would have in my bank account by graduation. And I mean down to the cent. You know what? That all went back to me not wanting to have to rely on anybody for money, period. And I, I just felt like I was a responsible, independent adult and I just wanted my finances to reflect that. And look, after that bad first year of college, the second, third, and fourth year, oh, they were, they were so good because every move I made was calculated and I got very consistent and very good at what I was doing. I'm making sure I didn't miss a beat on anything. I'm talking classes, practice, assignments, projects, all of that stuff, money. I had a plan and I stuck to it. When, when I tell you, I literally did not deviate from that plan at all. Like it, it was ridiculous, but it worked and it got results. But you know, life is a funny thing. It's a lot like a roller coaster. When, when you hit your highs like that and you're, you're just on top of the world and you think you're, you're doing everything right and you're getting all the positive results, boom. This happens. Once I graduated and started my first full-time management job directly after graduation, I quickly realized that I wasn't actually living in the real world at all when I was in college. I realized that college was just like a warm up for the real world where they taught you very basic responsibilities that we should all have as adults anyways. And bro, when I say basic lessons, I'm talking about basic lessons i'm talking about lessons like punctuality is important you know show up early if you show up on time you're late you need to show up early that type of lesson i'm talking about lessons like make sure you get enough sleep make sure you're eating right make sure you're staying healthy and exercising bro like like the most basic lessons that's what college prepared me for and you know no matter how many calculus and physics classes that i had to take none of that mattered None of that prepared me for the real world. No matter, no, no matter how many essays I had to write, no matter how many projects I had to make, no matter how many 3D models or 2D models that I had to build, no matter how much 3D printing, no matter how much solar powered cell phone chargers we had to build, didn't prepare me for the real world at all. You see, with school, you have deadlines. With school, you have time to study. In real life, stuff happens in real time and you have to be on your toes and think in any decision that you make can go against you at any given time. College was like a basic swimming class, but the real world was like throwing me into an ocean with my arms and legs tied behind my back and saying sink or swim. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. But you know, the most important lesson I learned is that no matter how much discipline you have, you could have all the discipline and ambition in the world. Guess what? The world does not care. The world is cold. It does not care. And to be frank, nobody really cares. You have to be there for you. No matter how good of a person you are, life isn't fair to anybody. There's gonna be people and circumstances that just literally try to break you down and they're gonna happen at the absolute worst times possible. And these challenges and trials and tribulations are gonna come into your life, not because anybody hates you, but because you need to figure out who you really are because you really don't know until you enter the real world. How could you? When you, Before you're in the real world, everyone else tries to tell you what you should do and who you should be. You don't really understand who you really are until you're thrown in a situation by yourself and you have to think and do for yourself in order to survive. 
And you know what? You really only got two options. It's either you look at these issues and challenges as a victim and you just fold under that pressure and just give up, move back in with mom and dad, or you can man up and stand up for yourself. And you know what? You, you might have those weak moments sometimes where you want to give up. You want to move back in with mom and dad. You want to stop what you're doing. But you know that, that, that that's where your strength comes from. That adversity is going to build you up to a stronger man, a better man. A man who looks out for people and makes sure that they don't have to go through the same thing that he had to go through. And that strength within you is going to pull you back and say, no, ain't no more moving back in with mom and dad. It's me and I'm going to figure this out. It doesn't matter what happens. I'm not moving back. And that was the mindset that I was in. Like I said, I had my first management role. I wanted to lead people. I got laughed at and ridiculed for being young because they knew that I was only 21 years old when I first got the job. I wanted a big salary when I graduated from college. And you know what? I did, but that came with a price. A price of my mental, spiritual, and physical health and energy. A price of being overworked and underappreciated. A price of uncertainty. A price of taking a hard to swallow pill every single day. Are you ready for that? Because I was on my own, man. There wasn't no going back to mama. It was just me, myself, and I. And you know what? A lot of people, a lot of my friends, and a lot of my family to this day don't even know. They don't even have any idea. I had to do a lot of suffering by myself. And you know what? I'll be perfectly blatantly honest with you. I wanted to quit, and I absolutely hated my life for my first two years out of college. And it was because of what I was going through and what I had to endure on a daily freaking basis. I didn't get no days off. And it was a grueling cutthroat job. But you know, all the pain, the uncertainty, and the adversity that I had to face and suffer as a young 21, 22 year old man, that has built me up into the man that I am today. And I am forever grateful for that really, really, really bad experience. I always say this, that was my best, worst experience of my life. And you know something, initially when people see you that you're young and you're out in the real world, they, they'll try to size you up. I'm not telling you this is exactly how it's going to go word for word for you. Everybody's, you know, walk looks a little different, but I'm just telling you how it went for me. You know, people were trying to size me up. People were trying to test me, see how tough I was, see how smart I was. But you know, something that gets people's respect is for one, a calm attitude and personality, even in a chaotic world that's around them. When they see somebody who can remain calm through that, that gains respect. And when they see somebody who can persevere and, and someone who is just resilient to the max, when they see that somebody will grind through anything, they don't care how bad it is, and they'll keep a positive attitude, that will build respect. And you know what, speaking of respect, I've gotta say this because not enough people talk about it and it's just really on my mind. So I'm gonna really share this with you right now. This is straight up value, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for still sticking around and watching this very long video, but you've got to hear this. When you, as a man, can move out of your parents' house, take care of yourself financially, and not have to lean back on them for finances, and you do this consistently for years, I'm talking you paying all your bills, you're paying your rent, your utilities, your phone bill, your insurance, your cars, everything. That is the moment when your parents will respect you as a man. I'm just being real with you. And look, I'm going to tell you a harsh truth right now. If you're still living with your parents, they do not respect you as a man. Not yet. They love you. They respect you as a son. They might love everything that you're doing. You could be a great person, but you don't get that respect as a man from them until you can show that you're financially stable by yourself. You can get out on your own and operate and succeed and not freaking sink in the ocean that is the real world. I'm just telling the truth, bro. I'm just telling the truth. The moment you can prove to your parents that you can survive and operate in the wild by yourself, they're at ease. They don't gotta do all that worrying about you anymore. They know that you're independent and you're successful all on your own and if need be, you can take care of them. That's what gets you respect as a man. So again, if you can't pay for your own food, clothes, bills, insurance, it's a wrap for you. 
until you can pay for those things. And you gotta think about it like this. If your parents don't respect you as a man because you still live at home, what makes you think anybody else is gonna respect you as a man? That's your parents. They love you more. Ain't nobody gonna love you like them. You know what I mean? So if the people that love you the most don't respect you as a man, that means you gotta get on it, man. You gotta get on it. That's why it's so liberating and freeing to actually live on your own. You might struggle a little bit, you might not. Everybody's walk looks different, but the bottom line is the one thing that comes out of that is confidence for you, but also you get respect. And as a man, that's something that I value. I value respect to a high degree. So my message to you is this, because this video is getting very long. My message to you is this. I moved out at a young age. I thought I was living in the real world when I really wasn't, until I was living in the real world. And if you're wanting to move out and succeed and operate properly within the chaotic world that we live in, there's certain things that you're gonna to have to start doing that you're not doing right now, like budgeting and planning for your goals. But there's also things you gotta stop doing. You gotta stop buying that BS. I'm speaking straight up from experience, man. This is not coming from a place of judgment. This is coming from a place of pure honesty. Stop buying those shoes. Stop buying those video games. Invest your time in the future. Save your money. Learn as many skills as you can. And I promise you, you will be able to move out in no time. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal growth and personal finance. If you liked this video, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get notified every single time I post a video. This channel is all about personal growth and personal finance so that you can control you, control your finances, and control your life and live life on your own terms. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.